Okay, before we get into me talking about my 2022 goals and checking in going into the end of this year with you all later in the video, I want to jump in and say thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is Fidelity. So thank you, Fidelity, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Fidelity can help you feel more confident handling your money and teach you that your money has the potential to grow no matter where you start your financial journey. We all have our own financial situation and Fidelity can relate to your challenges. They have the experience to help you navigate through challenges and reach your individual goals. Goals. Fidelity can help you improve your money habits with engaging and easy to use digital tools and digestible financial resources. It can feel overwhelming to get started, but Fidelity's Learning Center can help you stay up to date and take actionable steps. For example, with how-to videos, articles on budgeting, saving, investing. You can easily find quick tips on budgeting, goal tracking, and investing from Fidelity's Learning Center. I'm a financial beginner, so I love how Fidelity provides a range of learning materials for all levels of financial literacy, all on their mobile app. Fidelity offers simple, actionable strategies for your various financial needs, which is why I feel confident using them to reach my own goals. Learn more with Fidelity by clicking the link in my description. Once again, thank you to Fidelity for sponsoring that portion of the video, and let's get back into the rest of it. We're doing a little bit of a Monday Get Your Life Together reset vlog. I wanted to kind of check in with you guys also on my annual goals that I set that I wanted to do. I was gonna kind of do like a quarterly check-in, but it's a little bit past quarter three beginning. It's November now. I can't believe it's November. Halloween's over, so we're kind of starting fresh, looking at the last two months of this year, what we've accomplished, how our goals are looking, and what we can do and set some mini goals for the next two months of 2022 because that's when one of my goals which we'll get to was to keep looking at these and not just like write some goals on january 1st 2022 and then look at them on december 31st like i wanted to be intentional about checking in on them and what i could keep doing throughout the year because sometimes i feel like you forget what you wanted to do i did one of these videos in the spring so i did kind of like a spring check-in and now we're doing a fall check-in before the end of the year and kind of thinking I'm maybe brainstorming what I want to do for my goals for 2023, which is scarily close. I did some planning this morning in my Mind Your Business Planner, and part of that was planning out my meals for the week. So I have leftover chili in the fridge, but I wanted to get, and I also have zucchini, so I wanted to get a couple things that could go with that and then cook up like a stir fry that I could have in different ways this week monday reset kind of a goals check-in end of the year where we're at etc so kind of a like hopefully motivating for you and for me vlog let's go get the groceries we're back in this spot you're wobbling on my tripod i am going to take you guys through some of my goals now i had them all written out in this planner i kind of did at the beginning of the year if you saw that video an extension of the way that they had it laid out for 2021 because this was my 2021 planner so i had all my 2021 written in of their whole like set up with different categories and then i just kind of like translated it into my own for 2022 on the smaller side but what i decided to do is digitize it this year because this is the year i discovered notion it has actually made such a difference in my organization as far as like keeping track of so many things in one place digitally i really like the setup of it i've talked about it in previous videos i think i've done like habit tracker pages and um more long-term and shorter term goals i want to i've also tracked all my job applications on notion it's just been really useful and so i decided to put all of my yearly goals from the past year onto notion and put my next goals for the end of the year that we'll get into also on notion and i will probably do my 2023 goals starting from notion so you're able to track what you're working on and the progress while also categorizing what's completed it's just a great visualization i'm gonna do a little screen share a la carter sullivan and um just kind of show you guys and talk through the goals that i set out at the beginning of the year that i checked in on in the spring and where we're at now so here's my yearly goals page this is from a template i think that notion has but the first category is financial goals, which I already touched on. But more specifically, the goals I set for myself was one, become someone who invests. And first of all, the first steps of that were learning about different investments and kind of having some more 
I don't know, beginner friendly financial tools to help me learn what would be the best thing for me. And again, I'm not gonna get into specifics just because it is personal and it looks different from one person to the next. So it would be kind of, I don't know, I'm not an expert, so I don't wanna give financial advice myself, but I like to give you guys tools that I find helpful, which is why I want to share Fidelity. But yes, become someone who invests, that is something that is on track and I have learned a lot about The next year. goal is spend more wisely, re-rent. And I wrote this because I, like at the time of making these goals, had just been through a whole crisis internally of like if I was gonna renew my lease here in this apartment because it did go up a lot when I lost my COVID deal, etc. And while I could still afford it, it just seemed like painful to spend that much on rent and at the last hour i really like antagonized antagonized oh my god am i okay i really agonized over this decision for like weeks and put it off and at the final hour i was just like you know what i love this place too much i don't have any complaints about it it's what i need for this time of my life i'm just gonna keep it for another year um so because of that i made a goal like spend more wisely in other ways if i am spending more on rent and I don't know, I do think I've become a little more financially conscious this year and like keeping an eye on what I'm spending and I'm not perfect at it by any means. I say this one is like a little iffy, <laughs> I don't know. And also save with a purpose, like yes, I've been saving, but not with a specific purpose, which I feel like should be maybe in the next year or two, like what I focus on, um, like a bigger kind of investment, but yeah, it's been good to be learning about these things and like thinking about them this year, but I haven't really made huge steps, if that makes sense. And the last one was invest more in my health in terms of getting like primary care physicians and you know, being ahead of those kind of things. And I have not done that. <laughs> the last one shouldn't even be in the financial goals column, I don't think. I think I just meant like investing in health as a financial thing. I mean, I would say that I have made strides that just look a little bit different. Like I have, even though I don't have a primary care doctor per se, like I have seen doctors this year and um, gotten advice from them about like, what would be more useful in terms of like treatment for my asthma and found a different medication that is, you know, more affordable, but also works for me and things like that. Again, personal stuff. Um, but I would say I've made strides, but not what I pictured. Okay, scrolling down, personal goals. Um, I said I wanted more variety in what I read, and I've definitely read some more different, like, well, I don't know. I think it's been a mix. I think I've definitely this year gotten kind of, like, sucked into some of the mainstream, like, rom-com books and everything, the light reads, which are great. Um, but I have also read some different nonfiction and things, especially towards the beginning of the year when I was really focused on, like, my healing journey and reading things that would kind of challenge me more in vulnerability, etc. cetera. Um, so I do think I've done that a little bit, but I haven't really expanded it as much as I would like. So I'll get into that with like, towards the end of the year, what I wanna do. Develop more routines and signature style. I don't know. This is the problem with these vague ones. It's like, yes, but no. Like I think I've definitely found more routines and like at the beginning of the year with my work from home routine, like I really found a balance that worked for me and kind of like gave me a little bit of mental separation, even though I was working from home. And I think I found a good healthy routine with that. Um, I did feel like I lost it a little bit, like towards the end of the summer when, you know, I left my job and was feeling a little more chaotic, but I do think I've found more of that like created my own routines in a little bit of the chaos in the last month or two and i feel like i found more of a group with it and signature style i feel like i like my style like i don't really want to change it it's not like the most discernible style besides neutrals make my home cozier i i feel like it's cozy i don't know i just feel like i for so long was like you know what you see everything on pinterest and all these tiktoks of these aesthetic blah 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 apartments and then you kind of make yourself think like oh I need all this stuff and I need to like make it curate a certain vibe and all of that but really like I think what I realized is I'm comfortable with my apartment and like I shouldn't just get a bunch of stuff 
just because other people say that it needs it when I'm comfortable with the way it is. Like I love this blanket that I got and like little touches and little personal things that I put. Continue healing and becoming more self-aware. I have done a lot of self-reflecting this year. And honestly, I think I did a lot more work and healing, yes, but kind of like breaking myself down to learn what I need and what I'm made of. In a sense, this is kind of dramatic, but like in order to heal and be able to bounce back and like come back into myself and into my own this year. And I think that that was largely through the relationship I went through earlier this year that I talked about. And I, I think in my previous video, I talked about this vaguely, but I, I, I think I alluded that like, oh yeah, like I challenged myself with this in my friendships and intimate relationships and blah, 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 but I hadn't actually like talked about that relationship online. And so I feel like I'm in a different place now because back then I was like still, you know, in the early months of the relationship and like learning what I needed and what I could give and all of that. And I have learned so much in terms of that and like building a relationship at the beginning, but also like learning what I need and what I can tolerate versus adapt to and where to draw those boundaries. I think I've learned a lot about boundaries this year and I don't know. I think that this has been like the last few months of last year when I was talking about this were immense like times of, was an immense time of growth for me, especially going through therapy and like breaking down a lot of these things, you know, challenging that hyper independence as a theory. But I think I learned a lot about it in practice this year and made so much progress there. And also like going through a breakup and, you know, regaining that independence without bouncing back to the hyper independent side of things. But I do think that under this umbrella of this personal goal, I made huge bounds that I didn't even foresee when I wrote it. So I'm feeling good about that one. <laughs> um, okay, continuing on family and friends goals. Expand what I do with my friends, kind of like doing different activities and random things. Um, instead of just like restaurants and going out for drinks, etc., is kind of what I was talking about. And yeah, like I feel like we did a lot of more creative things and like fun, spontaneous, like you know, potluck nights and like outdoor barbecues together and concerts and I don't know. I think I have kind of, but I, I still think I could do better at this. And that goes into the next one, which was get involved in classes and groups, which I want to still do, which is also in my goals to continue because I feel like I haven't made that much progress on this. But again, I feel like that could go in with the expanding what I do with my friends. Like I want to take a class with some friends and do something like that. But TBD. TBD. Okay. Um, more effort to see long distance friends and family. Yes, I do think that I've actually done this this year and feel really good about it. I was able to see family that I hadn't seen in like six years. I went to my cousin's wedding in Seattle, like I talked about, and got to catch up with so many of my family members that I hadn't seen in so long on my mom's side. And then um, in September, we went to Ohio and got to visit family on my dad's side that I hadn't seen in years. And you know, my grandma's getting old, my grandma's getting older, and it was just so rejuvenating and refreshing. And those were both trips that I did, you know, I had the flexibility to do while I was just working for myself, which was a blessing. Um, and I got to reunite with Sophie and Sierra for Sophie's Bachelorette, and yeah, I definitely think that I've been good about this, refilled my heart a little bit. So I want to keep that up and like continue to make trips and make time to see family and friends, etc. that I don't get to all the time. And finally, integrate relationships into life more. I think when I wrote this, I wanted to like, I don't know, I think especially the beginning of my relationship with my boyfriend, I really wanted to like challenge myself, like thinking that maybe, you know, bringing him into my online world or like in YouTube videos or something, might be a sign to me that I've broken down these vulnerability walls and blah, blah, blah. But I really think that I've learned that that's not the case. Like I think there's a line between being open and being vulnerable. And I think what I've learned this year is that you don't have to be open or share everything with everyone to be a vulnerable person. Like I think it's about discerning 
what the important relationships and you know groups of people there are to bring those into and not just like bringing it around everywhere does that make sense like i think i found a balance of kind of like talking about the aspects of my relationship that i think could help other people like more abstractly in my own and how it reflects on me and what i've learned and what i want to you know improve in myself and in future relationships etc but I didn't have to bring him on and make him a character in my online presence for that. Does that make sense? Like, I think that I've done this, integrating it into life. Like in the past, I would, you know, be seeing someone and not want to tell anyone about it, even like my close friends, because, you know, I don't want it to like get messed up or I felt like I wanted to keep it private and blah, blah, blah. But I just really learned that there's a difference between private and secret and vulnerable and open. And I think that that's really where I've, drawn the lines and boundaries in a healthy way hopefully and like i can t continue to like learn and do better with that in the future but with this past relationship i did bring him a lot into my life in like my other friends and close relationships and you know he did get to meet a lot of people that were super important to me here in new york but i think bottom line is that i've learned really like at what degree is it healthy or helpful or beneficial to integrate them into what parts of your life you know what i mean like like a million voices and opinions about this person in our relationship aren't going to benefit it you know what i mean like yeah there were certain parts of it that i wanted to keep personal but that doesn't mean like keeping it away from your friends so yeah that's where i've kind of grown i think in that regard this year okay oh my god i really need to get through these okay i've been talking way too much about these but working career goals Carve out a niche in my field, strengthen UN network, more research writing, and build my own profile and find another job I love early. <laughs> um, carve out a niche in my field. I honestly think, yes, I've done this more than I've realized without even trying. Like, trying, yes, that sounds stupid. Like, oh, I just ended up in this, you know, topic of work that I didn't even try. But in terms of like, I think I've serendipitously found that different opportunities throughout the past few years in my career and since grad school and all of that have kind of integrated and appeared in ways I think that I found slowly a niche that I really like and I'm confident in the direction it's going and also like strengthen network hopefully in person I did get to do events in person this year which I was so excited about um both abroad and at the UN not a ton but um I do think that I have really worked on strengthening my network um and the UN sphere and also a little bit broader than that. For example, in one of the jobs that I applied to that I was interviewing at recently, I think I talked about in a vlog, unless I edited that out. But something that I had realized was like, I was seeing all these connections from my like previous experiences. I, they were just like stumbling into it. Like I was looking through their list of employees that they had on the website and I was like, oh, I recognize this woman from when I entered at the State Department. Like, I didn't realize that she had moved to an NGO. And then, like, you know, um, people I was interviewing with had worked with people in my previous organization and just names that I recognized. And just, you realize in that niche, especially the, like, topic of work that I would have been working on, even though I didn't get it, you just kind of look around and realize that, like, wow, all of this that I've been working up to has, like, built this network and has built this niche and made me confident in like my abilities without being like a strategic networker i really have built um a good network more research and writing yes kind of i did some like blog post -y kind of writing um and some more like specific themed research in work but nothing like huge publications or anything um and build my own profile and find another job i love early Still working on that. And find another job I love early is because we're still out here looking. But you know what? Like it's so hard when you make goals that are just out of your control. You know what I mean? Like you can apply to 500 jobs and it's not in your control that any of them are going to choose you for an interview or hire you. Like sure, you have more chances, but you just cannot foresee when the right opportunity is gonna come and even if you do, you know, get an offer for something early that you think is a good step and you take it, like you really never know what could have been. It's just so out of your control. So I'm not like beating myself up about this. And I think that I've learned that I just have to give myself a lot of grace and have patience in this season of waiting for the right thing because 
you know, if I am waiting, you know, it's been a couple months now and still looking and hoping that the right thing is coming, like I'm not just going to settle for, and again, this is because I have social media as a job, which is a huge privilege and I can still pay my bills. This is a different story, but because I'm in that situation, like I wanna take advantage of that and really find what's a good strategic next step for me that works. And I think that's more important than just like finding a job early. So in my case, yes. So, you know, we haven't reached that goal, but we're still looking and hopefully the next thing is like the best thing ever, <laughs> but who knows? Okay, and heart and spirit goals. I already talked about a lot of this a bit, but become vulnerable with more people. Yes, I feel like I've done that. Honest and emotional journaling and outlets. Yes, to an extent, but I, again, as every year goes, I just haven't journaled as much as I wanted to. I haven't been journaling regularly, but I do think that I've like reached for my journal in emotional moments more than I have in the past, which is good. Um, like when particularly things when particular things happen, I've just kind of like, when I'm feeling really emotional about something, I'll write, which is good. But I want to make it more regular, and find balance in sharing in appropriate capacities, which I do think I've done. Deconstruct hyper independence. I do think I've done that too. I do think that I'm not in that same place or mindset that I have been in the past, of you know thinking that relying on other people or to an extent or having your emotions be affected by someone else to an extent is a bad thing um like i think that there's varying obviously there's healthy degrees of those things but um i do think that you can stand on your own two feet but like it's not a bad thing to lean on other people for different things from time to time you know that's life like we're social creatures so i think i've definitely like changed my own perspective on that a lot okay so those are the goals that i set and kind of my analysis a little bit of where I've been but now I'm gonna say I'm gonna show you guys the ones that I wrote for at the end of the year just a few more tangible ones I think I want to I don't know I like the idea of making goals that are broad because you never know how things are gonna change throughout the year but I do think I can make them a little more tangible so we'll see but this is what I have for the rest of the year first one is continue learning French which I am still doing my Duolingo I'm not doing it as daily as I was when I started a couple months ago a month ago um, but I'm still learning so I want to continue doing that next is move every day um, I think I've made it a good habit of even if I'm not doing an intense workout in the gym on a certain day like just getting out and going for a walk and just kind of making a habit of like getting regular movement which I think is a very good goal for everyone to have um, so I want to continue that, which I think I'm going to show you guys. So this is the Notion template. It's like a board where I'm going to move this to in progress. So I'm continuing to learn French and also move every day in progress. I think I've been pretty good about that and finding like a healthy balance of working out. Next is take a class. I wanted to do a French class. I still might. I don't know if I'll take an entire course because they're weeks long. And also it's getting kind of weird now going into the holidays, but, um, I don't know maybe i'll just take like a one cooking class or i just want to like learn something new and take a class i don't know why i'm so fixated on this but hopefully i'll do that in the next two months the next one is journal weekly so i thought this was kind of an attainable goal in regard to talking about like when i've had emotional venting in my journal i want to kind of you know just prompt that a little more regularly um and next is read three nonfiction books so i don't want to like frame this as you know no more <laughs> frilly romance books if that's what you want to do and that's what makes you happy like i like reading those cheesy ones here and there but i do want to add in a goal of reading something more nonfiction, reading about a topic that i don't know anything about or maybe i don't know a ton about and just learning something more with my reading so that's a goal read through nonfiction books by the end of the year i thought that was a fair goal also next is reach out to people in my network maybe like have a coffee with someone from a previous job or just kind of like catch up with someone and make an effort to kind of like maintain those connections not just in terms of like i'm looking for a job can you help me kind of thing um but just like putting you know work into those because i genuinely want to know how they're doing um next is see again i try to do things where it's like i really do want to make progress in this part of my life but I can only control so much so i decided to say apply to three jobs i feel imposter syndrome towards again i don't want to be just like throwing everything at the wall and putting a bunch of effort into applications for things that i genuinely know that i will never get but i 
you know, want to challenge myself more. If it's, if it's going to ask for like 10 years of experience doing de data analysis, then like obviously I'm not going to do that. But just more things that I would on first glance be like, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough or I don't meet 100% of the things. Like I find myself doing that a lot. So just kind of like challenging that more and apply to three jobs that I normally would not. And the next one, vulnerable moment, go on three first dates. I have not really, I don't know. I've kind of been going back and forth with dating in terms of like since my relationship. Now it's been a few months. Like it's going into November, um, you know, things ended pretty much in August, but like, I feel like I've gone through different phases of like, oh yeah, I think I want to date again, but then maybe thinking, okay, but well that was a little bit out of loneliness and I wanted to like, I don't know. I feel like I've been in like a weird, it's not black, obviously it's not black and white, like coming out of a relationship, but not putting too much pressure on it and just kind of like letting things happen as they may. And also it's been a whole thing of like, me wanting to figure out my job situation before delving into dating again and all of that but really it's just like it's not that deep first dates are not too much of an investment um i think i could go on three first dates and just kind of like dip my toes in the water again and feel it out and yeah that's a goal i set for myself and also just like make it fun you know it's not that deep and the next one is make a decision on my lease by the end of november so yeah i might be moving out of this apartment um i don't think i talked about that yet i filmed when I opened my lease renewal thing, but I don't know if I included that in the vlog or not. Um, basically, my lease is up end of January. I got my renewal last month because they give four months notice. And it went up a little bit, which wasn't crazy. But it was still just like, I, I knew that I should be paying less. But I've been talking, so I was like, you know what? I just feel like I should move out and find something that's a little more smart for myself. Like I don't need all the amenities. I do love it. I am used to it now, which is like a bummer. Um, but I always thought when I moved in here, it would be like a temporary thing with a COVID deal. And I just feel like it would be smarter to spend my money elsewhere. But after talking to other people with the market right now, I still want to look around more and I'm going to do some looking this month and focus on that. That's going to be kind of a priority to me in November and deciding then based on what else is available and what else I can get for my money. Um, I may or may not move. So I don't know. It's up in the air. We'll see. But I want to make a decision by the end of November because that's when I get my priority rate for my renewal if I do renew here. So yes, those are just a handful of goals that I thought for the end of 2022 would like be good for pushing in these still this direction that I said at the beginning of the year. Um, not that I'm going to 100% accomplish everything and I wanted to make them kind of like bite size attainable and a little more specific. Um, and again, these aren't crazy goals. Like I don't think I'm gonna change my life in the next two months by any means. But I think little steps are the best way to go because if you set yourself up for failure by putting your goals up here when you know that you're not gonna hit them, like it's just not very conducive to achieving goals in the future if you just make a brain pattern of, oh, I'm gonna fail anyway. It's always good to do things that you actually can do. So. Those are my end of 2022 goals. This was kind of a long chat. Hopefully you guys found it interesting or motivating of now you wanting to check in with your goals for the year. Um, and now this is good, I think, for me to have this in mind going into the end of the year because it'll help me kind of shape what I want my 2023 goals to look like based on what worked or didn't work or wasn't even that useful for me to work towards <laughs> in this set of goals. So. Yay goal setting, yay notion. It's notion.so is the website if you guys are familiar with it. I think I'm like the last person that found out about it, but I am gonna leave it there because I've been talking for like half an hour. And yeah, I don't know. I feel like, I feel decent about this. Like I think a lot of these things are kind of more long-term than just one year is, you know, what's tough about setting broad goals. Like sure, I, have become more vulnerable but that's not a start and end goal that's a thing that is a continuous kind of project like we're all works of progress especially on big broad things like that and i want to continue working on it in 2023 and beyond but it is good to reflect on you know just what i've done and learned in this past year that has helped me get there so i feel like i'm kind of on par maybe a little behind with what i thought um 
But again, I feel like things have changed even so much from when I set these goals to begin with. So it's just so interesting looking back. But anyway, I think we've had enough reflecting. Talk to you later. A little bit later to head down to the gym. Gonna do a leg workout. Again, I always feel like legs are also the hardest to do in my gym when it's busy. And I always feel like I end up trying to do it at like the busiest hour. It's 5.30 now. It's a little bit later than 5.30. But we'll see what we can do and at least get some movement like I talked about in my goals since I didn't go for a walk today. I'm going to strut on the treadmill. <laughs> Listen to music. Had a great workout, came back, had dinner, showered, and now I'm just kind of feeling so relaxed and feeling good after kind of reflecting on my goals today and really taking stock and thinking about what I've accomplished, but also what I still want to work on. And of course, this is like a quote that I always come back to, but let the space between where you are and where you want to be inspire you rather than frighten you. So. Anyway, I'm just reading, having this cozy fireplace vibe. See you guys in my next one. Subscribe if you're not already. And stick around. Okay, good night.